let's get some detail now on the voting process. Tom Rogers is the Australian Electoral Commissioner and he joins us now. Tom, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so we all know Hi. the date, October the 14th. What happens now for you? Uh, well, we're already preparing and we have been for some time. It's such a large event and such a complex event. Um, what citizens will see um, once the writ is actually issued, that we'll start a whole range of other processes. This will look and feel very much like a federal election, which the, the same sort of voting services available, overseas voting, voting in person, postal voting, and all of that will now start to kick into gear uh, as we get closer to the actual day of the, the referendum itself. OK, so what should people be doing and checking now to make sure mm. that they can vote October the 14th? Uh, so already the electoral roll is in the best shape it's ever been since Federation and um, that's been a long-standing task of the AEC. But what I'd urge people to do right now is to jump on and check their enrolment to make sure that their enrolment details are accurate, uh, to make sure that their vote, um, their vote in the referendum counts. And just while I'm here, secondly, they might also consider working for us. Uh, and there's a place on our website where we're urging people who might be able to see their way uh, free to work for us to do so. We need a big workforce, about 100,000 people. Neutrality requirements exist, but please, if you're thinking that you could work for us, we'd, we'd welcome your name on the list. Is that something you offer for um, elections in general? Absolutely. Um, we, it's one of the, on the day it's delivered, one of Australia's largest workforces. I think at the last election, we had 105,000 people working for us. These are members of the community. Uh, who help us deliver the event, and it's so important. So again, please consider doing that, but also check your enrolment details at the same time and read uh, on the website about how you might be able to access the vote to make sure that your voice counts. And come referendum day then, uh, Tom, what will voters be presented with? What will the ballot paper look like? And also there was some controversy over whether voters should use a tick or a cross in the box that they choose. Can you clear that up for us? Mm. So uh, already people will be receiving in their letterboxes uh, a pamphlet from the AEC with the yes and the no case presented and some information from the AEC on the voting process. If you flip that over to the back, uh, it's got example ballot papers and how to complete uh, a formal ballot. The way to make sure that your vote counts is to write either yes or no, or to deal with the conspiracy theories, either no or yes, depending on what you want to do in English, in full on the ballot paper, and if you do that, that way your vote will count. Uh, there has been some um, uh, misinformation about the voting process over the last week, um, and uh, I, I'm really urging everyone to write yes or no in full on the ballot paper, and that way you can make sure your vote actually counts. Um, there is a, some provision, uh, some savings provisions that are unremarkable in that savings provisions have been in the electoral uh, law space for over a century, ticks and crosses with referendums for over 30 years. Uh, the AEC is applying the law that Parliament passed, that Parliament intended. Um, I think at the last event, the formality rate was 99% of Australians write, uh, wrote either yes or no. So it, I'm urging people to do that for this event as well. Uh, that's When you say there that there's been misinformation about the voting process, over the last week. Can you just explain what you're referring to there? Mm. I'm even nervous talking about it because every time I say it, it inflames an issue that's a non-issue even further. Um, I just urge people, please, if you want your vote to count, write either yes or no. Um, but like at every election uh, for over a century, there are certain provisions in the Act which enable the AEC, uh, the, enable the electoral authorities, watched by scrutineers, to give effect to the choice of voters. Um, and so there's been some discussions about the issue of ticks and crosses. Um, uh, again, we put out a media statement last week. I don't want to add to it because it's further inflaming it. Please write yes or no to make sure that your vote will count. OK. One of the uh, criticisms from remote communities, Tom, in central Australia is that a lot of information from the Electoral Commission, your body, is in English, which often is a third or fourth language spoken by people living there. And if you're asking them to write yes or no, that's going to be an issue as well, isn't it? Mm. Uh, we do provide a lot of translated materials and at the last election, um, forgive me if I get this wrong, but we translated a lot of our materials into something like 34 culturally and linguistically diverse languages and uh, well over 15, might have been as many as 20 Indigenous languages. We also provide, we've got a separate 
uh, Indigenous Facebook page, we provide in language materials support. We've had partners in communities going around to those Indigenous communities explaining how to cast a formal vote. That will continue. There's a heap of information already that people can access and I'd urge them to do that to make sure they're informed about the process. And Tom, do people in remote communities vote earlier than the rest of the country? They're such an important group of people in this referendum. If that's so, does that have implications for the campaign process? There's less time for locals to make up their minds, isn't there? Mm. Uh, at every election uh, in Australia there is a thing called pre-poll voting uh, and that is available to everybody. And um, you know, I've just, I saw the announcement at the same time as you did, so the 14th, um, there's normally two weeks of pre-poll voting, so most Australians will access, who, who need to access pre-poll voting, will do so from, um, you know, whatever date that is, the 2nd of October. Uh, in remote communities, those extreme remote communities, as we start to do remote uh, mobile polling with our remote voter services offering, that will be for a slightly longer period. But again, it's such a big task to make sure that we give everyone the opportunity to have their say. We're working with those communities at the moment to make sure that they're aware of when we're going to be there and how they can cast a vote. People are probably not aware that at every election we use um, cars, four-wheel drives, planes, helicopters, occasionally boats to get the vote out to remote communities. We really take remote voter services very seriously to make sure that all Australians are going to be able to have their say uh, for this event, we're returning to pre-pandemic levels of service delivery for the overseas vote, for example. I think there'll be something like about 100 of our overseas missions uh, where uh, voting will be available in person. So we provide a really comprehensive service to make sure that all Australians can have their say. So six weeks of campaigning now begins. What's your advice to voters as they read, watch, listen to the campaigns of both sides and to the general noise and chat that will be around? Mm. Well, uh, a few things. Uh, remember, voting is compulsory. It's the same as for an election. So please, I'm urging everybody to make sure they understand voting in the referendum is compulsory. They must do it. Uh, secondly, make sure you consume all the information. If you are at all worried, please visit our website where there's a heap of information, including even a practice voting tool so that you can practice p casting a formal vote. Please consume that, look at it, visit our website and talk to people if you need to. The Australian Electoral Commissioner, Tom Rogers, thank you so much. Thank you.